Today's video is going to be a little bit different to the others on the channel, but I just got a new package, so let's open it up and see what's inside. So last year, some of you who followed my website, which I haven't updated as often as I probably should, will have seen that I designed a way to motorize my camera slider using 3D printing and a bit of electronics and whatnot. Anyway, I, I kind of abandoned the idea because it didn't work out quite the way I'd hoped, which is why I haven't really been using it a lot. It worked pretty good, but it was a bit of a pain because everything was hard coded into the sliders firmware. And if I wanted to change any settings, I had to basically have a laptop with me, edit the code, plug it in, re-upload it, reset it, and then it'd do the run. It, it wasn't exactly ideal. So I've decided I'm gonna tackle it again, but I've decided to upgrade some of my equipment in order to make it, starting with this. So this should be a new soldering iron. The soldering iron that I've been using for the last, I don't know, eight years has been this one. And, and it's worked pretty well. It's okay, but it, it's a bit big and unwieldy and it, it does the job, but it's not great. So I decided to get a new one and that's this. Okay, so we have a bit of tape on the side. God, they have taped this up really, really well. But this is the TS100 soldering iron. And I'd seen it on Julian Eilert's channel and a couple of others on YouTube. So I thought I'll, I'll do a little bit of research, um, you know, see what the overall consensus is and decide if we want to get one. And then finally I decided I'm just going to get one. I got it on eBay. I paid about 43 pounds for it, which is a little cheaper than it normally is. Normally for the basic package, it's about 55, 56. If you want the complete package, which comes with like 11 tips, it's around about 120, 130 pounds. Um, I imagine it's under there, so big reveal. In here we have a hex key and a couple of screws. Uh, safety instructions. So you'll notice that it's very small. Like this is it, this is the whole thing. And then this is the, the tip. So it's the standard chisel tip. This goes in here. Oh, I need to unscrew that. There's a screw on either side holding it in. So I need the hex K. And I think those are just both spare replacement screws for this. Oh, okay. So it's only this one that holds the tip in. This one, I guess, holds some kind of cover on the back. So one of the reasons I got this, I mean, you can see it is really, really small. I'm going to need to spin that around a little bit because I'm going to be holding it like this. So I want the tip to be at the right angle for me because I'm a, as you can tell, I'm a lefty. So now when that's on, as I'm soldering, I can get side access like that or put it all on top like this. So yes. So it has on one end, it has a DC jack and it has a micro USB socket for updating the firmware and connecting it to your PC, but it runs on 12 to 24 volts. And at 24 volts, it gets 65 watts of power which means that unlike my old soldering iron, where I have to turn it on five minutes before I want to use it, this one I can turn it on and 11 seconds later, it's at 300 degrees. But let's give it a go on 12 volts. Is this, this is not gonna fit. That's, ah, that doesn't fit. So this must be 2.5 mil and this is 2.1. My original plan was to do a 12 versus 24 volt comparison with this thing, but my 12 volt adapter is the wrong size, but I have got a 24 volt six amp adapter, which is way more than the 65 watts. Um, what does it say it needs? It doesn't say about amps, but 24 volts, 65 watts is like two and a half amps um, ish. So we're just gonna try this and, oh, it's on version 2.18. I better not touch the hot bit. Press. Oh, press A. 25 Celsius. Oh, oh, wow. That, wow. It's fluctuating quite wildly at the moment. 
as you can see, <laughs> I can smell that it's hot, but it's bouncing between about 280 and 370 at the moment. Or it appears to be settling. So I guess it's doing some kind of PID tuning for its first turn on. So that it's sort of like a, a, a I guess like a self calibration thing. It seems to be settling at around 300. This is annoying. I hope there's a way that I can flip this upside down so I can read it in my left hand. It's obviously designed for a right handed person so you can read it that way. But lefties, we, yeah, we're, we're just we're just screwed. So anyway, let's try this and see how well. And I shouldn't be doing this without the fume extractor, but that's melting perfectly. Oh, this is so much easier to hold and and. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's uh, let's solder something. I'm a little disappointed that the iron didn't come with a stand. I've had to shove it inside the stand for my other soldering iron. Um, but let's see if we can solder something. I know I've got some stuff in here that isn't soldered. Nope, nope. Aha! We have an Arduino Pro Mini clone. And an MPU 6050 gyro or accelerometer thing. So this one I probably won't be using in the project, but I want to see how well this iron solders. So we will solder the pins. In. Oh, it comes with straight or bent ones. So you can use the bent ones to mount it vertically onto a board like this. And let's see if we can So I'm going to put one in, but then I'm going to re-melt the solder. Straighten the pin, let it reset. Right, and there we go. Now it is set, I'm just going to run down and do all the rest. We'll do one at the other end because it's furthest away from the one we just got right. There we go, that's it. Solder done. If I turn this off, oh, if I, it's not going to tell me the temperature, is it? It's just going to die. If I set this down to how low does it go? Let's see how quickly the temperature drops. So it goes down to 100. Don't do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put it on the box and leave that hanging over the edge. While I open this one. This is the Arduino Pro Mini. I'll try and do this without slicing my fingers off. So it's going down, it's down to 180, it, it's slowly falling, it's not falling crazy quick, but let's bump this back up to 300. And watch how quickly it gets back up there. And how quickly it settles as well. Wow, that settled instantly that time. I'm not going to put these in the end because these are the pins. Normally, you know, this would go in here. Or like this and then you'd plug your things on the end to program it but I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to shove the the programmer in there. This is probably just going to be for early development on my new redesigned slider. Um, this won't be on the final thing but we're going to pop those in there and then stand them up. All right, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to find a breadboard to put this in. I know I've got one somewhere. Ah, I found my proper brass thingy. I like this one. This is a much heavier, higher quality one. This is kind of cheap and crappy. I mean, it works. It does the job. It's just it, it moves around a bit where this is a bit heavier, solid base. But I can't find refills for this. They're all tiny like this. Alrighty, so this is something I'm working on and testing as part of the new slider project, but for now this can just work to hold these in place. There we go. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do every other one, that way we don't keep the iron in one spot for too long. And then we'll do the same down the other side. Yep, they look good. This this solder that I'm using, it's a little bit messy. I mean, I got this years ago at Radio Shack. The nice solder is this one. 
but you can't actually buy either of these anywhere anymore. I wish I could get like a really nice big supply of this, like half a kilo, it'd last me forever. But you can't, so I'm gonna be gutted when this runs out. This is what I'll use for the final project, but just for developing and testing, this is what I'm gonna use. And that's it, that's pretty much this, by the way, is the ESP8266. This is one of the new boards that I'm considering powering the new slider from. The other board I'm considering is this one, which is the ESP32. Big difference is this is an 8-bit board. It's very basic, it's got limited memory, limited features. It's very cool, it works well. Thousands of 3D printers around the world are powered by these. Drones are powered by these. They're very capable little chips. This, though, is 32-bit. It has more memory. It has built-in Wi-Fi. This one is a lot like this, but faster. It's dual-core, and it's also got built-in Wi-Fi, but it also has built-in Bluetooth, which means that this one I should be able to control for my phone. That's pretty much it for this, I think. I'll pop a link to where you can get one of these in the description below, along with the various kits. I need to download. There is a PDF manual because it doesn't tell you what these... Let me hold long press this. Oh, okay. Both of these buttons seem to do the same thing. Literally, all you do is you just push it and it goes down and you push it and it goes up. And if you long press either one, it just goes from the default into set the temperature mode. There are supposed to be other features that this is capable of. I don't know what. I'm going to download the manual PDF file and, uh, and see what it says. I know I can change this logo when it boots up. I don't know whether I want to do that. I might do that. I might not. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. That's the TS100 soldering iron. I'm going to have to see if there's a new firmware for this see what settings I can change. But yeah, this is a massive difference when you compare it to this one size-wise. And uh, like this is more powerful than this. This is 48 watts. This does 65 when I've got 24 volts into it. And it's a lot easier to handle. So yeah, well pleased with that. So if you like this soldering iron, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and drop any questions down in the comments below. I don't know how soon I'm going to be starting working on the slider project again. But when I do, there's a bunch of different components that I want to work through because I want to give it a bit more control than just bouncing left and right and leaving it to it. So yeah, so there will be videos up on some of the different elements that you can then apply to other projects if you want to. But yeah, I've wanted to start doing more electronics and DIY photography related stuff. Huh, <laughs> DIY photography. Um, and... Now I'm finally getting around to doing them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.